Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Namaste. Today we carry forward our discussion on silvicultural systems and in this lecture we will have a look at the clear filling system. Now if you go through this flow chart, this is the clear filling system. So what are the characteristics of a clear filling system? The first question that this flow chart asks is what is the concentration of filling and regeneration operations. So, in the case of a clear filling system it is concentrated on part of a forest. You do not do the filling and regeneration operations over the whole area, but it is concentrated in on certain parts of the forest. So, that is one characteristic and then the clearing of the old crop is done in a single filling. So, the whole of the of the old crop in that concentrated part of the forest area will be filled in a single filling. So, these are the two characteristics of a clear filling system. So, we define a clear filling system as a harvesting system in which all merchantable trees within a specified physical area of land are filled and no significant tree cover remains. So, it is a harvesting system, it is a system in which you are felling trees and removing the timber or you are harvesting these trees and this is a system in which all the merchantable trees. Now, what are merchantable trees? These are those trees that have a sufficient diameter or girth and height as to be economically useful. So, you can sell these trees, these trees can be traded. So, these are known as merchantable trees and in this system all the merchantable trees within a specified physical area are filled. So, it says that the working is concentrated and everything that is in the specified physical area of land where you are concentrating your operations all the merchantable trees are felled and no significant tree cover remains which means that you you remove all the canopy and there is no canopy that remains. So, a clear filling system is a harvesting system in which all merchantable trees within a specified physical area of land are felled and no significant tree cover remains. So, what are the characteristics of the system? The first characteristic is that successive areas of mature crop generally equal equiproductive areas are clear filled. So, what it is saying is that you take an area and you clear fill that area, then you go to another area clear fill the mature crop in that area, then you go to the third area, clear fill it, then you go to the fourth area and so on. Now, these areas are taken to be equiproductive areas. Now, what is an equiproductive area? So, suppose this is your forest. So, you divide it into a number of small parts where you will be concentrating your efforts and you will concentrate your efforts or you will choose these areas in a way that if we look at site 1. So, in the first year you are working on the first site and suppose you get x tons of timber. Then in the second year you move to site number 2. Now, in the second in the second year also you should be able to get x tons of timber. Then when you go to the third site, again in the third site you should be able to get x tons of timber, which means that there is an equal production in each year. So, suppose you have a situation in which this section is the most fertile, this section is less fertile and then this section again has a greater amount of fertility. 
So, now you will choose your equiproductive areas in a way that here because you have a greater density. So, you take a smaller area and in this section you take a larger area and then here again you take a smaller area. So, that in every year you will be getting the same amount of production. So, you concentrate your working in the clear filling system in such a way that you are working on an equiproductive area and you are getting the same yield every year. So, the first characteristic is that successive areas of mature crop generally equiproductive areas are clear filled. Now, if you are doing a clear filling, so there are no more trees that remain in that area, there is no more canopy that is remaining in that area. So, what will happen to the seeds? So, you will not be getting new seeds in that area, because you are not leaving any trees. So, in most cases the regeneration in the case of a clear felling system will be through an artificial regeneration. So, you will be making use of AR, in which case you will be planting new plants or other way you can be putting seeds into this area. So, generally the regeneration is artificial regeneration and you can do this artificial re regeneration in two modes. You can do a departmental regeneration or you can do a Tonga regeneration in which case you, you give this area to villagers. So, that they are able to uh, raise some agricultural crops, but at the same time they have the responsibility of regenerating the forest as well. So, generally the regeneration is artificial regeneration done either in a departmental mode or done in, in collaboration with the villagers. But at times we also find that we use a clear fell, felling system, but we go for a natural regeneration. Now, how can you have a natural regeneration? You can have a natural regeneration, because suppose these are the large merchantable trees that are there in your forest, but then when you are coming into the forest to cut these trees, then these are not the only trees, because there will be a number of non merchantable trees. There will be a number of, of seedlings that are there in this area, the young crop advanced growth pole crops. So, when we come into this area we will find that there are a number of seedlings in this area or there are some other trees of the same species, but they have not reached a merchantable height. So, these are the small trees and they have not received sufficient time to become completely mature trees. So, in this case when we do a clear filling we remove these last size trees, but once we have removed them there are still trees that are left and these trees will continue the natural regeneration. So, natural regeneration is the regeneration in which we are not doing any planting, we are not throwing seeds from outside, but the crops that have come up on their own they regenerate the forest. So, in the case of clear filling there is also a possibility of natural regeneration. The second option is that of coppicing. So, suppose you have this tree and in the clear felling system you remove this tree. So, you cut this tree, so that only this stump remains and you have removed the other portions. Now, after a while this stump will give out a shoot or probably a number of shoots and one or more of these will later on grow and become the tree. So, this is regeneration through coppicing. Now, coppicing is a vegetative mode of propagation. So, you are not putting in a new individual, the same old individual gave out a new shoot and it became a tree once again. Another way in which you can have a natural regeneration in clear cutting is because when we talk about the forest floor there could be a number of seeds that were there in this area. And not all the seeds have, gen have uh, germinated in the last season. 
So, the soil will act as a seed bank and there will be a number of seeds that are uh, that are lying there on the forest floor. So, with time probably these will give off some new seedlings. So, there will be natural regeneration because of the seed bank. Also there could be natural regeneration because of other modes of vegetative propagation such as root suckers. So, in the case of uh, clear felling you have regeneration that is either artificial regeneration or sometimes natural regeneration using seeds stored in the area, advanced growth, vegetative propagation or coppicing. Another characteristic of the clear felling system is that all the vegetation gets removed and all the growing space becomes available for the new plants. So, in, in the case of the clear felling system there is no competition whatsoever from the previous generation of trees. So, this is as against a shelter wood system in which there are some trees that remain or that are left in that forest and these trees are also using the same sunlight, the same water, the same nutrients that could have been made available to the new crops. But here because you have removed all the trees of the previous generation, so all the growing space 100 percent of it becomes available for the young crop. Now, the character of the crop that comes up is even aged for the forest. Now, why is it even aged? Because uh, all these trees are coming up at the same time and the differences between their ages is typically less than 20 percent of the rotation age. So, you will be having an even aged forest that gets formed. Now, at times clear felling system is also used with certain deviations. So, these deviations could be prevention of unnecessary sacrifice by leaving a few promising group of trees. So, what we are saying here is that you had this forest and you are managing this forest using a clear felling system, but then probably the market is down probably you do not require that much amount of wood or timber. So, you might say that okay, I am going to use a clear felling system, but I do not need so many trees to be felled. So, why do not I leave a few trees? So, in that case what you will do is you will cut these trees, but you let this tree remain on the site. So, after a while this will be the situation. So, all these trees have been removed, but one tree remains. Now, this one tree you are not leaving it because it is providing shelter, you are leaving it because it is a promising tree and probably you can come back to this site and later on cut it. So, you, this is one deviation at times people go for uh, uh, try to prevent the unnecessary sacrifice by leaving a few promising groups of trees or at times people might retain a few mature trees as a nurse crop in which case this system will tend to move towards a shelter wood system. So, but in the case of a shelter wood system you are leaving uh, the, the shelter trees across the forest, but in this case people might just say ok let us leave a few trees here they will provide shade they will uh, nurse the young crop. So, this is a deviation that we generally find in the uh, clear felling system or people might go for girdling of unmarketable trees. So, in this case people might say that okay, this, this is the forest to begin with and here you have a tree of another species. Now, some person might say that okay, I need to do a clear felling, but then this tree the yellow tree is not a marketable tree, I cannot sell it in the market. So, why should I spend my time and energy and money to cut this tree and take it outside of the forest? Why do not I do this thing that I will just girdle this tree near the base. So, I remove the bark and I disrupt the vasculature of this tree. So, invariably in a short time this tree will die, 
but then I leave this tree here on the side. So, I cut all these trees, but I do not cut this particular tree, I just girdle this tree and I let it remain in this on the site. So, the other growing space has been made available, but this tree after a while it will lose its canopy, there will be only a few branches that are left. So, this tree is not using up a lot of my sunlight, this tree is not using water, it is not using nutrients, because it is a dead tree. So, why should I spend my time and effort and energy and money to take it out. So, I will just leave it here. So, this is another deviation that we generally see in the case of a clear filling system, girdling of unmarketable trees. Another deviation is designing the pattern of filling depending on the local conditions such as hillocks, streams etcetera. What we are saying here is that suppose you have a hill and this hill is all full of trees. Then you have this plain area and your forest is in this undulating land and probably you also have a river that is flowing here. So, this is a, an area with the rivers. Now, at times you might say okay, I need to manage my forest in a with using the clear felling system, but then if I do a clear felling on the mountains on the hills, then probably that will lead to a huge amount of soil erosion. So, let me just leave the hills as such, because in any case it will take me more amount of time, energy and resources to cut these trees in the hilly areas. In the plains it is easy to work, but in the hilly areas it becomes difficult. So, why do not I leave those trees? Similarly, when we talk about the, the trees that are there on the banks of the river, they are also stabilizing the river banks. Why do not I leave those trees as well? So, in that case what I will do is I will remove these trees. But I will remove, but I will retain the trees that are there on the hills and I will retain the trees that are there on the river banks. So, now the situation becomes something like this. So, I am making use of the local conditions, I am keeping them in my consideration and I am changing the clear filling system based on the local conditions. So, this is also another devi deviation that we generally find or at times people might to this clear filling in the form of progressive or, or alternate strips. Now, why would somebody want to do it in the form of a strip? Because suppose this is the forest and the prevailing wind direction is this. So, I might say that in when uh, that when I am doing a clear filling in this area, in that case the amount of uh, wind that will be flowing over the land will be too high and it will be desiccating the soil or probably even eroding the soil. So, why do not I do my clear filling in the form of strips. So, whenever I am denuding any strip even when I am denuding the first strip what is happening is that there is only a small amount of land over which the wind is blowing. And typically, when we do this strip uh, based clear filling, we do it against the direction of the wind. So, first of all, I will do my clear filling in this area, because in that case, the trees that are here are going to protect the land. Then, next year, I will do the clear filling here. Next year, I will do the clear filling in this strip. After that, I will do it in this strip. And by the time I reach this strip, these areas have already regenerated in the form of forests. So, this is another deviation that people make use of. They can go with progressive strips in which case you do one strip after another strip or you can go with alternate strips. So, in the case of alternate strips what we will do is that in the first year you have uh, clear filled this area. Now, in the next year you will leave this strip and you will clear fill this area. In the next year you will clear fill this area. So, why are we doing this? Because the wind speed is so high 
that if we clear filled all the strips one by one in that case the amount of uh, soil erosion because of the wind will be too high. So, these are the kinds of deviations that we generally see in the case of the clear filling system. Now, there are different types of clear filling systems. You can have the standard or the uniform clear cut system in which case you remove every stem whether it is commercially viable or not and no canopy remains. So, this is the most traditional or the most standard form of clear filling you remove all the trees no matter what species no matter what size. So, that the whole of the growing space becomes available and once you have uh, removed all the trees you will probably go for planting of the new generation. So, the regeneration will be through an artificial means. So, this is the most standard way of doing the clear filling. Otherwise, you could go with a patch clear cut. So, you are removing every stem from a patch. So, you are doing it patch by patch, because probably your forest is so large that you are unable to clear the whole area in one go or you could go with a strip clear cut in which case you remove every stem in a row usually perpendicular to the prevailing winds as we just saw. Another type is clear cutting with reserves in which case you remove most of the stems, but you save a few for some specific purposes such as snag trees. Now, what are snag trees? Snag trees are old trees in which you have certain hollows in which birds or other animals can make their home. So, you are managing your forest with a silvicultural objective you want to harvest timber out of it, but there are also wildlife and you need to take care of the wildlife. So, you do a clear filling, but you retain a few trees for this specific silvicultural objective of wildlife management. So, this is known as clear cutting with reserves, because you are reserving a few trees and you are not cutting them. Another type is the slash and burn clear filling. Now, in the slash and burn clear filling you, you remove all the stems and you burn the residues. So, in this case you do not let anything remain on the uh, on the piece of land. So, you have removed uh, whatever was merchantable and whatever remains that is the twigs, the branches, the leaves you burn them all and this is a very extreme form of deforestation and is generally done when you are converting your forest into an agricultural field. So, you do not want to have any biological residue that is remaining in that piece of land you remove everything by burning. So, these are the types of clear filling system. Now, when we talk about a clear filling system we also have to talk about the coops. Now, what is a coop? Suppose, your forest is a very large forest and you cannot work in each and every area of your forest in the same year. You, it will take you multiple number of years to clear fill your forest. So, how do you organize your management or your operations in a way that every year you have some work to do, every year you are getting some revenue out of the forest, every year you are getting some produce from the forest, how do you ensure that. So, suppose the rotation. So, we begin by looking at the rotation age of the crop. Now, rotation age is the age at which your tree becomes mature for felling. Now, let us take a simple example that you are growing eucalyptus. Now, a eucalyptus tree generally takes 6 to 7 years to reach maturity and at the age of 6 to 7 years you can cut your eucalyptus trees and uh, sell them in the market probably for the making of plywood. So, suppose your rotation period is or r is 6 years and this is the forest that you have. So, what do you do? You can divide your forest into 6 equal parts. So, here you have 6 equal parts in the forest and you work on one part in each year. So, in the first year you will be, uh, be felling 
this section in the second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year, sixth year. Now, at the end of the sixth year, the first section has now regenerated and you have trees that have reached the rotation age, they have now become mature for filling once again. So, in the seventh year, you will again move back and fill the, the section that you uh, fill the coop that you had filled in the first year. Then in the eighth year, you fill this one, in the ninth year, you fill this one and so on. So, if the rotation age is n years, then how do you form the uh, equiproductive areas, such that in every year nearly every nearly equal area gets filled. You divide the whole area into n sections and one by nth of the area gets worked every year. So, in this case, so you have n is equal to r is equal to 6 years. So, 1 by n or 1 by 6 of area gets worked every year. So, this is the formation of coops. Next, have let us have a look at the suitability of the clear filling system. When do we use a clear filling system? It is suitable only for light demanding species. If you have a species that uh, is unable to tolerate uh, intense light in the early stages of its growth, in that case you cannot go with a clear filling system, because once you have removed the canopy, the intense sunlight is going to kill off your young generation. So, it is only applicable for light demanding species. You will only use it for those species, where you can you are assured of the regeneration ability of the species, because you have if you have cleared up the whole area and you tried to regenerate that area and the regeneration did not come up. In that case, because of desiccation, because of soil erosion, you could have a situation in which the whole of the area has now become unproductive, in which case we will call it a forester's folly. So, to avoid a forester's folly, you will only use it in a species, where you are sure that this species will be able to regenerate in the stipulated time period. When you are using a clear filling system, you need to consider the soil, the soil cover and the soil fertility of the area. If the area is such that you have a very small amount of soil or the soil is not fertile enough, then probably when you do the clear cutting, the regeneration will not come up and this area will become barren. So, the, uh, the soil conditions and the soil fertility have to be ensured have to be checked before you are using a clear filling system. It is very much necessary when you are changing species or the forest composition. So, for instance, you have a forest that is uh, a mixed forest and you want to convert it into a teak plantation and you want to convert it into a teak plantation, so that you can extract timber out of it and you want to completely convert it from a mixed forest into a teak plantation. So, in that case a clear filling system might be recommended, because you will be removing all the trees and you will be planting those trees that you want to have in the forest. So, whenever you want to have a change of species, a change in the composition of the forest, clear filling system can be resorted to. Clear filling system is also suitable when you look at the economic considerations. The working is concentrated and if you have sufficient number of workers and laborers that are available, when you are doing the clear filling, then you can go with this system. Because whenever you are doing the clear filling, you will have to do the regeneration in a short period of time. So, only when you are sure that you will be getting the workers, you will get you will be getting the laborers, you have enough money to pay them, then you will go for a clear filling system. Then locality considerations have to be kept in mind. If the area is very slopey, if the area is prone to soil erosion, then probably you will not go with the clear filling system, because once you have exposed the soil, it will very easily get 
eroded especially in the slopy areas and especially in areas that have large uh, winds or large uh, rainfall. Then nature and type of forest to be produced is something that you will have to keep in mind. Because suppose you want to, uh, to detain an area as a natural habitat, suppose you want to have natural looking aesthetics of the forest, you want to have a forest that looks like a natural forest. If you go for with a clear cutting system, then because it produces an even aged forest, all the trees will look when and the same and it will look very artificial. So, the, the kind of forest, the nature of forest that needs to be produced will determine whether or not you will go with the clear filling system. Then the amount of mechanization is also a factor that determines the suitability of the system. Because in the case of clear filling, uh, it is generally advisable to go with large machines, so that you can clear fill the area in a quick manner and you can remove a large amount of forest produce. In this case, you are not talking about removing one or two trees from here or there, you are talking about the removal of a large number of trees. So, in this case mechanization is not only advisable, but it is also imminent to be used in certain areas. So, do you have those machines, do you have large size trucks, do you have large size harvesters will determine whether clear filling system can be used in your area or not. So, let us now have a look at the advantages of this system. The first advantage is that it mimics the natural processes of fire and large scale insect attacks. So, when you have a forest fire, the whole of uh, the, all the trees in the forest are burnt, they get burnt or for instance, when you have a, a large scale insect infestation, all the trees die off. Now, your clear filling system is trying to mimic nature in these forms. So, the kind of forest that will come up after a large scale forest fire or after a large scale insect infestation will be an even aged forest and that is the sort of forest that you are producing in the case of a clear filling system. So, you are mimicking some natural processes and so if you want to support pioneer species or if you want to raise certain species that cannot compete in mature forest, then you can go with a clear filling system. Because probably your uh, the plants that you want to raise are those that are unable to compete with the mature crops. So, in that case when you remove all the other trees and you only grow your, your desired species, they will be able to thrive. Also it is a simple system there are easy and efficient operations. You do not have to have a large amount of skill, you do not have to train the workers a lot, they just have to go to the forest and cut each and every tree, one of the simplest of managerial operations. So, it is simple, it is easy, the operations are efficient. There is a concentration of work, so when you are talking about a certain area that needs to be clear filled all the activity will be there in that particular area. So, you will be cutting all the trees, you will be loading them into trucks, you will be transporting them from that area. So, all the work gets concentrated and when you have a concentration of work, then management becomes easier, management becomes economical. You have more output per unit area, there is a saving of time and better and quicker financial returns, because everything is happening very fast. You do not have to visit the area again and again, you just go there once, you, uh, you harvest all the timber and you have your returns. So, it is a concentration of work that provides better and quicker financial results. It, prov it provides suitable light for light demanding species, this is one of the best systems that you can have in the case of light demanding species, because there is no canopy, all the uh, resources are now made available all the light is made available, all the growing space is available. So, it provides suitable light for light demanding species. There is no residual damage to young crop, since the area need not be visited or uh, need not be revisited for many years. What we are saying here is that, suppose 
you were uh, working in these groups. So, you have worked the first group and so you will revisit this area only after 6 years. So, in these 6 years the crop that the young crop that came up in this area has ample time to turn into mature trees. You are not revisiting this area again and again, so that you want to cut a few more trees. If you revisit this area, if you are bringing in machines again and again, then there would have been a chance that your young crop will get destroyed, they will get trampled upon or when you are removing the, the timber for harvesting and if there is a young crop, then during the dragging operation of the timber, it is possible that the young crop might get adversely affected. But in the clear cutting system, because you are not revisiting these areas again and again, so there is a lesser chance that your young crops will be damaged. So, there is no residual damage to the young crops. You typically get cylindrical bowl and good quality timber. Why do you get a, a cylindrical bowl? Because there are a number of trees that are now competing for the same growing uh, space. So, you have the young crops and all of them are competing against their own peers and so each of them wants to uh, tends to uh, to increase in its height, so that it is able to gain the maximum amount of sunshine. So, because of this competition you will have trees that become long and that have a lesser amount of taper. All they also have a lesser amount of taper, because each of these trees is protecting each other from the wind pressures. And so, according to Metzger's theory, there is a lesser requirement to put more, uh, more of the materials at the base. It allows for establishment of a more uniform crop, the crop is very uniform, it is very even aged. Then there are lower costs of planning layout, supervision, harvesting, site preparation and intermediate treatments, because the operation is very simple. You go to the site, cut off all the trees, harvest all the timber, then make pits, put up your new plants, end of it. So, you do not have to have a large amount of planning, layout, supervision, site preparation and so on. So, things become easy and because of that they become cheaper. It easily accommodates large size equipments, because when you talk about a forest and if you have a large size equipment. So, you can begin from one end, you cut this area, then you cut this area, then you cut this area and so because you do not, because you are you have to remove each and every tree. So, it becomes easier for your equipment to get inside the forest, because if there is any tree in the front, you, you can very easily cut that tree and remove it. So, that there is a space that is made available for the entry of your machines. So, it easily accommodates large size equipments. It permits control of insects and diseases, since all the material gets removed. So, in the case of a clear felling system, you do not leave any tree, you do not uh, uh, leave any diseases, you do not leave any parasites that could have been uh, residing in that particular tree. So, in that case, if you have any insect infestation, if you have any diseases and if you go with a clear felling system, you have removed all the trees and so there is no pathogen or no pest that remains in this area. So, it is a very good method if you want to. Uh, control diseases or pests or insects. There is a better control and modification of site conditions prior to planting, because you have an open denuded area in which you have to perform your planting operations. So, you can do whatever you want to do, you can bring in tractors, you can bring in augers and there is a much better control and modification of site conditions that you can do. Then it also enhances worker safety, since most of the trees get removed. You are not entering into this area again and again for one or two trees. So, the, the worker safety is enhanced to a very large extent, because uh, 
to, uh, towards the back of the workers, there is no tree that is left. However, the system also has certain disadvantages. You cannot use it for a shade bearer species. So, a shade bearer species is one that requires shade in the uh, early phases, especially in the early phases of its life. So, because you remove the complete canopy, so there is 100 percent intensity of sunshine that gets into this area, and if your species is a shade bearer species, then the plants will die off. So, this clear filling system cannot be used for shade bearing species. Sometimes regeneration cannot be ensured, so which might lead to foresters folly. So, in the case of other systems such as the shelter wood system or the selection system, you leave trees in the area. So, at all times your forest looks as if it has a number of trees and it looks like a forest, but in the case of a clear filling system. Suppose, you have removed all the trees and you were not able to regenerate the area. So, in that case this whole area will look denuded, it will look very ugly and people will say that you have committed a forester's folly or a forester's mistake. It should not be used in frost prone areas, because your young crops are completely exposed to frost. There is no mother tree to protect them against frost. So, you cannot use this method in the frost prone areas. Then it increases soil erosion and landslides in the hilly areas, and so it is unsuitable in hilly terrains. Because if you have a slopey area, you remove the tree cover, the soil is exposed, there is any amount of rainfall, and the soil will get eroded. So, you cannot use it in hilly areas. It increases deposition of silt in the dams because when the soil gets eroded, where will it go? It will, it will reach to the nearest river through the channels and from there it will reach one or the other dams and then it will result in silting of the dams. So, if you, you have a dam in the vicinity, probably you should not go with a clear filling system. It reduces soil fertility, since the nutrients get washed away, because it is exposing the soil, the soil is made bare. It is. So, in that case if there is any rainfall, then the nutrients will also very easily get washed away. Then there is a poor aesthetics in the case of clear filling system, because you have a forest which will have a patch that does not have any trees, it looks very bad. There is a huge accumulation of debris in a short span of time, and this may lead to soil acidification because what you are doing in a clear filling system is that, <coughs> when you are removing all the trees in this area. So, the timber is removed, but then an, a lot of the debris is also generated in this area. So, you will be having small branches, small twigs, lots of leaves that are not merchantable that you are not removing from the site. So, what will you do with those? You just leave them on the site and when you leave them on the site they get decomposed and when they get decomposed that will also lead to the production of a number of organic acids. And so, the soil may get acidified, so it leads to acidification because of the huge accumulation of debris. Then it may result in release of soil carbon, which has impacts on global warming and climate change. So, when we talk about carbon that is sequestered in an area, the carbon is sequestered not just in the plant biomass but it is also sequestered in the soil, because you have a huge amount of uh, dead and decomposing materials that are there in the soil. Now, once you expose your soil, so in that case the, the local microclimatic conditions change and, the, and this carbon that was stored in the soils that gets released. So, this has an impact on climate change, it has an impact for global warming. It can result in adverse conditions for young crops. What sort of adverse conditions? It may lead to desiccation of soil due to exposure to light and air. So, the soil may get dried out and when you have a soil that is getting dried out, it is not good for the younger generation. It may lead to invasion by weeds, grasses and other pioneer species, because now there is nothing to outcompete them. And in the case of a number of weeds, what we have seen 
is that uh, the weeds are extremely light demanding species. So, if you have a weed that is a light demanding species, so if you have a cover of the previous generation of trees, then the weeds are unable to grow. But once you remove all the trees from the area, then weeds such as lantana can very easily invade into the area and then they will cover up the area in no time. And once they cover this area, it will be very difficult for you to regenerate the species that you wanted to, uh, to regenerate in this area. So, there is a very easy invasion by weeds, you can also have invasion by grasses, you can have invasion by pioneer species. Then your young crops get exposed to frost and to cold winds, which is again not very good for your young crops. There is a greater insect and pest activity due to availability of exposed and cut trunks. But this is also very important, because when you have a tree which is a complete tree, then the insect will have to, uh, to make a hole in the trunk and then it will be able to reach to the sap. But once you have cut this tree, so the cut portion is exposed. So, in this case it is very easy for insects and other pests to get their food. And in that situation, the insects will boom their population like anything. And so, the insect and pest attacks on the young crops will be huge. So, this is also another disadvantage of the clear filling system. Another one is that it destroys wildlife habitats and cover, because you do not have any canopy that is left in the area. So, there is a very huge destruction of wildlife habitats and a very huge destruction of the cover that is that was available for the wildlife. And this may result in large scale extinctions and so the system is completely unsuitable for protected areas. Now, in India in the case of protected areas we do not do any sort of filling, but even in areas that are to be used also for, for wildlife purposes clear filling system is never recommended. Now, it may destroy mycorrhizal associations, mycorrhizal association refers to the association between fungi and the tree roots, which makes uh, the, uh, the availability of nutrients very easy for the trees. Now, once you have exposed the soil by removing all the, the trees, then this soil will have a very different microclimate, it will be exposed to the sun and in that case the fungi might die out. And that would have a very significant uh, consequence on the young crops, because they will not be able to form the mycorrhizal associations. And in that case, they will not be able to get nutrients as easily as their parent generation was getting. Now, during a significant portion of the rotation, the growing space is not fully occupied by the crop trees. Now, what are we saying here? We, we are telling that you have this forest, you have removed all the previous generation of trees and you have these saplings that you have planted. Now, in the early stages probably this much amount of land could not only support these seedlings, but at the same time might also have supported say two or three trees. And probably you could have left these trees for harvesting at a later point of time. So, when your seedlings have grown to a certain height and they, they now require more amount of nutrients, then you could have cut these trees. So, in that period of time these three trees would have put up more and more increment, but because you remove all the trees in the clear felling system, they are not able to put up this increment. So, this is an economical loss this is an ecological loss and this is a loss for climate change mitigation. So, during a large portion of the rotation, the growing space is not fully occupied by the crop trees and you could have left a few mother trees, but in this clear filling system you are not doing that. So, this is a loss. It may also increase the chance of flooding, since the water moves as a deluge. Now, in the case of suppose we consider this hill and 
you were having a number of trees here. And under these trees there was a uh, you had the forest floor, you had the sub canopy and because of that any rainfall that came into this area it was not able to flow down very quickly. Because all of these plants all of the roots of these plants they are holding the water back. Now, if you remove all of these trees what happens is that you have a small amount of rainfall and all of it comes down in a deluge in a flood. So, there is a, a possibility that if you have say a river here and if you have removed these trees in that case the water that comes up during the rainy season will come up in, in such a short period of time that this river will now swell and it will flood. So, there is a chance of flooding it increases the chances of flooding since the water moves as a deluge there is nothing to stop the water. Then it also disrupts the long term availability of water in the streams and so it is unsuitable for the water supply catchment areas. What we are saying here is that suppose this, uh, this hill was providing was a part of the water catchment area that was supplying water to a nearby town or a nearby village. So, you, this water was being supplied to the nearby town. Now, if you remove these trees then probably the amount of water that will be available for this town it will go down. Now, why will it go down? Because during the rainy season all this water will immediately come down as a deluge it will get washed away and in the rest of the year earlier what was happening was that this hill was acting as a sponge. It was doing ground water augmentation, because what was happening was that the rains that were falling here these trees were stopping the flow of this rain water down. And so, this water was getting absorbed into this hill into the soil and then later on during the seasons that are not seeing the rains this water was slowly becoming available to the local stream. And so, you were getting water for a longer period of time, but if you go for a for a clear filling system. So, now the ground water augmentation will reduce and during the rainy season you will have a flood and in the other times of the year you will have a drought. Also at the same time we have this curve that is known as the Kugzera curve. Now, this is based on, uh, on uh, forest readings that were done in Australia. So, this curve on the y axis you have the annual stream flow on the y axis on the x axis you have the year. Now, what these people were doing was that they had this forest and they were measuring the amount of water that was made available in the streams. And typically the water the amount of water that was available in the streams was more or less constant. Then there was a huge forest fire in this area and the whole of the area got denuded. Now, remember that when we talk about a clear filling system we are trying to mimic a forest fire. So, the results that we can see in the case of this forest fire will be the same results that we will find in the case of a clear filling system. So, when you have uh, this forest that is now completely denuded then after a while the young crop will come up and when they are uh, uh, when they are uh, sequestering carbon into their bodies in the form of biomass they are they are constructing cellulose which is a carbohydrate. So, they are sequestering carbon and at the same time they are sequestering water into their bodies. So, when when the stream flow readings were taken it was found that this level it dropped sharply after the forest fire and it has still not reached to, to the original level. So, in the case of a clear felling system we generally find that there is a loss or a reduction in the amount of stream flow that we will find in the local streams. So, this is also another disadvantage another consequence 
of a clear filling system. So, in this lecture we looked at the, the clear filling system as a system that is used for our silvicultural operations. In this system we typically go and remove all the trees in an area. So, it leads to a very concentrated working you hardly require any skills. So, it is cheaper the management is easier and you get a large amount of profits in a short period of time. The regeneration is typically artificial regeneration except in some cases where you can have natural regeneration by seed banks, by vegetative propagation, by coppice system. And you can uh, use um, this system either in a departmental fashion or in a tonkia system in which you take help of the villagers as well. Now, this system is very good when we talk about a light demanding species, because the canopy is removed. So, all the uh, so 100 percent of the light intensity is made available to the young crop. However, you cannot use it for a shade loving species or a shade tolerant species. This, is speci uh, this system also has some major disadvantages in the form of that it does not result in a natural looking forest. It makes a forest that is an even aged forest and also it exposes the soil it uh, and it does not create or it creates conditions that are not very helpful for the young crops. There can be desiccation, there can be exposure to frost, there can be exposure to winds. However, in certain circumstances when you want to control certain diseases you can go for a, for a clear filling system. If you want to change the crop composition of your forest completely, then you can go for a clear filling system. So, like every system this system also has its own pros and cons and these need to be kept in mind when you are, we are when you are proposing to use the system in your forest. So, that is all for today. Thank you for your attention.